Good morning, Journey and Happy Sabbath. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for those from all over the world that are joining us uh, on our channel here. We are very happy to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, just a reminder that if you would like to give and if you'd like to support the church, especially in this unprecedented, unpredictable time, um, there are several ways you can do that. If you are local, you can actually drop off tithes and offerings here at the church, and we're here and ready to receive it. Um, you can go to journeysda.org and click give, or you can text journeysda give to 77977, and the wonderful people at PushPay can help you through an incredibly simple process uh, to help you support what we are doing here at Journey. And for those of you who are given, are giving and will give, thank you so much. But before we get started, let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for sacred time. Thank you for the idea of the divine and of the spiritual and of you entering in and breaking through our mundaneness and our mundane sense of time to lift us up to you. Watch over us, guide us, bless us, and love us. Speak, Lord. We're listening. Amen. So around fall, um, and I realize that fall is part of the reason that fall is my favorite season, is during this time, my grandmother would make persimmon cookies. She'd get persimmons from friends and from neighbors. I'd even go from time to time and find these trees at a business uh, center in the courtyard, and I'd have a long picker and be picking persimmon after persimmon after persimmon. And my grandmother would have a huge freezer full of frozen persimmon. Why? Because she made persimmon cookies and everyone wanted some of those cookies. And so for a certain length of the year, our kitchen would perpetually smell of baking persimmon cookies, of all the spices, of the very interesting fruit that give, gives it a certain uh, flavor and moistness that other cookies don't have. She'd have these huge wooden boards that would be put out on the dining room table and hundreds of cookies would be cooling out there. I remember how sore my arms would be as I help her mix the batter and uh, how thick it would get and how at a certain point I needed to be the one doing the mixing because she didn't quite have the strength to, 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 do, to mix like, large bowls of batter anymore. Not long ago, uh, my, my sisters made persimmon cookies. And taking one bite of that cookie took me right back into the kitchen in a memories of doing that uh, with my grandmother. And in a really interesting way, made it almost feel like she was there with me, that she wasn't really gone, gone, that, she, that it carried on and memories were still there inside of my heart, locked there and treasured. Um, and even this time, of, that time of year, when we would make persimmon cookies still reminds me of her. And I think that there's something really beautiful about this idea, right? This, this beautiful idea about traditions and food and things that, that link us to these memories and link us to the, our loved ones, even those that are no longer with us and connect us all together. I think that's why holidays are so important to begin with. And so I love the fact that much of the Christian church um, has this idea of sacred time, have these certain periods of time throughout the year where they commemorate certain events. And this week, um, the, most, much of the Christian church has actually begun another one with a season of Lent, starting with Ash Wednesday, last Wednesday. Um, Many of you might have seen people with ash uh, crosses on their foreheads, and that's what that comes from. You see, they take the palm leaves that they used for Palm Sunday, which heralds in the, the Passion Week and Good Friday and Silent Saturday and Easter Sunday, and they burn those leaves afterwards, and the ashes from that are then used for Ash Wednesday. Now, what does this season signify? Well, this season is reflection, and this season is introspection and contemplation and what is it contemplating? It's very specifically contemplating the suffering or the passion of the Christ. And if we look in Mark, um, it's interesting that after a certain uh, length of time where Mark is, uh, Jesus is being really vague and really obtuse, talking about different spiritual ideas and principles, um, 
Jesus then tells them, and he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And I find it really interesting that um, he's not speaking obtusely. He's not speaking in symbols. He's not like doing this, this thing that he does where it seems almost open to interpretation. Um, he tells them plainly that he is going to suffer and die. Um, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Peter didn't like the fact that he was saying what he was saying, because Peter didn't want Jesus to die. And I think that many of us can resonate with that. But then turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever would save their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. For what does it profit a person to gain the whole world and forfeit their soul? For what can a person give in return for their soul? And I think there's something really beautiful about what much of the Christian church does during this particular season as we count down the days to the Passion Week and we count down the, way, the days until we commemorate not just the resurrection of Christ in Easter, but also the suffering and the sacrifice of Christ on Good Friday. And so many of the Christian church chooses a couple different ways to celebrate this. Many, many Christians through the season of Lent choose something to give up. And it's that in essence, and perhaps in a small way, but I think a meaningful symbolic way, they make a sacrifice of something um, in their lives, something that they would miss, something that they would like to have during this time, but choose not to have, to choose essentially fasting from, as sort of as a commemoration and as a remembrance and as almost like a tie in um, to the sacrifice and the suffering that Christ made. That every time, say, you give up chocolate and every time you're going to eat chocolate and you decide not to, you remember Jesus sacrificed himself for me. And Jesus gave up his life for us. And so I, I find something really beautiful in this. And yes, it's a tradition. And yes, it's not a scriptural concept. But I think that there is something really beautiful when we point to the reality of what Christ has done for us and of Christ's sacrifice for us. So many believers sacrifice something for, for Lent and give up something for Lent. Many believers do not eat meat on Fridays. Now, granted, they eat seafood, and that's a whole other conversation. Um, but I think that there is something that many of us as Christians, and especially in the Adventist tradition, can actually benefit from a, a powerful symbol like this. Why? Because sacred time connects us with greater realities. And we as Adventists know as well, if not better than others, about this idea of sacred time. Why? Because we engage in sacred time, uh, sacred time and we enter into sacred time every single week because that is what Sabbath is. Sabbath is sacred time that connects us in our mundaneness, in our mundane realities, in our mundane routines. It breaks that and it connects us to a greater spiritual reality in Christ. I believe seasons like Advent and seasons like Lent and seasons like Pentecost can do the same thing. That by connecting to a greater spiritual reality during this time, we can grow closer to Christ. You might have reservations about that. You might have problems with that. You might have issues with that. And that's okay. But I invite you. I invite you to give it a try. I invite you to perhaps open up uh, your horizons and open up your mind to the possibilities of a tradition or a practice that can, can bring a greater spiritual uh, reality to your experience. And I believe will edify and enrich your spiritual experience. So, as we enter into the season of Lent, what are you giving up? Would you like to give something up? Would you like to give this a try as we count down to the Passion Week, as we commemorate the sacrifices that Christ has made for us? Think about it. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Thank you for everything that you have given us. Thank you for being a canonic God that empties God's self into us. God, if we be comfortable with it, Lord, please give us 
and an opportunity to have an even deeper spiritual experience with you. Give us a chance to experience sacred time and this spirit Christian like calendar that we can actually take a moment to commemorate your sacrifice for us in perhaps a smaller way by giving up something in our lives. Lord, continue to watch over us and love us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. If you have any questions, if you'd like to comment, please feel free to enter in on the jot form that's going to be in the description below and reach out to us if you want prayer, if you want Bible study, if you want baptismal study, hit us up and let us know because we would love to, to engage with you. Or so if you like what you're hearing here, if you like what we've been doing, subscribe to the channel or share it with someone you know that might benefit from it. All right, we love you guys and we'll see you later.